Hey guys, it's C2 here, and I'm going to be doing that displacement material tutorial that I promised on the giveaway at uh, 100 or 150 likes. I don't really remember, but um, yeah, so I promise you guys it, and I'm going to be showing you guys how I made those materials and some different ways you can edit them to, I don't know, do your own liking and also kind of like the factors that influence the displacement material and stuff like that. So uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is make a sphere which I already have here and uh, really with the displacement the size of the object that you're using also affects it so um, if it's a bigger object you're not going to notice it uh, pop out as much if it's a smaller object it might pop out too much and uh, you're going to have to play with some of the uh, descriptors whatever you want to call them in the material itself so uh, after you make the sphere get it to whatever size you want um, you're going to want to change the segments so keep it at 24. You're not gonna want to change that. Sorry. Um, you're gonna tick off, tick off, render perfect. It comes with it on already, so I already have mine off. And I'll show you guys the difference after we make the material with what that does. So um, I'm gonna double click down here, make a new material. Or you can also go to create and then new material. Either one works. Um, all right. So you're gonna have to go to color. Gee, I'm just gonna name this tutorial. All right. Uh, color texture load image I just have the one that I've been using so uh, I don't really make search pass or whatever I don't know if it makes a difference or not I really don't care but um yeah so you load your texture up here and then you're gonna want to click copy channel because this is uh, what you would call a channel so um, I mean if you copy the channel you can paste it in any of these other things so uh, then we're gonna come down to reflection tick that on brightness at like five texture we're gonna want to put fresnel or fresnel however you want to call it and uh, I'll probably put that like 10 so uh, what fresnel does is it just gives it if I put it back all the way you can see it gives it like a little reflection around the whole thing but uh, as soon as you bring it down it just kinda becomes subtle same with the reflection putting it only at five so it only really hits with light shining on it um, we're gonna go to bump Check bump on texture paste channel. We're gonna put the bump strength like five, and what that's gonna do is it's just gonna bring out a little bit of the detail coming out of the actual image. Um, then here we come to the big boy down here displacement. We tick that on. Uh, change the intensity so intensity centered to intensity. Texture we're gonna paste the channel, and uh, we're gonna bring the strength to thirty, and we're gonna have the height at five. Um, then you're going to turn on sub polygon displacement. Now the subdivision levels here, that's going to like manage how many things you have coming out of it. So uh, and that really, you're just going to bring this down to like two. So it just makes it a little bit less intensive of a process. So now we can put this onto the sphere, hit render, and uh, boom, you have the displacement coming out of it. Now this one's really subtle if you want to. You can come back in here, displacement, put the strength up to 100. We'll see what that does. Yep, see it just makes it come out a little bit more. You can already see it as it renders. But I mean, it still keeps the actual image there. It just uh, displaces it a little bit more. I think that looks a little bit better in my opinion. And uh, like I said, also the size of the sphere or whatever you're working with. If I ring that down, I believe it should come back out. Yeah, see, you can really see from the sphere when it renders. To how big the actual height is of the object. I don't know, that kind of looks like a little meteor. So maybe someone could use that if they wanted to. That's probably already taken though. Um, and same, if you have it really big, it's not going to look right. So yeah, I mean, there, there's a few different things you can do. I mean, obviously you can still see the definition here. It's just not as, I don't know, not as precise or sharp as you would probably want it because it's so big. But, uh, the image in itself is a really nice image and yeah I mean you can see over here it gets a little bit blurry it's not as pristine as it should be um, I'm just gonna bring it back down alright so I think we're like right there um, and now I'm gonna show you guys what the render perfect does if you take the render perfect on I'm sure there's gonna be someone in the comments saying oh my displacement doesn't work that's because you probably forgot to take off render perfect so as you can see, there's really nothing that comes out of here except for the reflections that we put on. It's just like a normal material. So as soon as you tick off Render Perfect, then you hit Render, you'll see the rendering. No. Alright. 
hit render, make sure you hit render. Um, you'll see the displacement starts to come alive and pop out of the actual like, sphere. So uh, that that's pretty much it, guys. I hope people can put this to good use. I know I haven't personally used displacement a lot. I know I've uh, messed around with it in a few scenes, but um, I don't know it's not really not really what I use. It'd probably be good for some abstract stuff, but uh, I don't know. Like I said, it works really good with uh, rock materials. This is actually some tire tracks <coughs> that I found on Google. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and uh, see you guys first video 2014. Deuces.